This is Andy Purewell for Boxing News. I'm drawn by trainer Don Charles here in Saudi Arabia. Don, good to see you. How is life treating you? I mean, what can I say? Life couldn't be better, you know. To be um, my job, my hobby, is getting me to see the world and to stay at such complexes. So I can't, I'm, I feel blessed and I'm very happy. It was good to hear that you're in good spirits, Don, and obviously a massive fight for your charge once again on Saturday night. You had a big fight last time, a lot of people questioning what Daniel Dubois had to offer, and he walked through the fire with Jerome Miller, came out on top, and now he goes back into the fire with and with Filip Hergovic. Talk to me about this fight, Don. What are you expecting? What does Daniel have to do to overcome the challenge of Filip Hergovic? Get in there and execute the game plan as close as possible as what we've uh, practised to do. Um, and will be victorious. Stylistically, how do you want Daniel to go about defeating somebody like Filip Hergovic? That would be telling, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we have a game plan, like I said. Every fighter is different. You have to bring a different strategy. Yeah? And we believe we know how to negate uh, to get to Mr. Hergovic and, uh, and uh, be successful. And we've done that. We've been doing that for the last 12 weeks. Filip Hergovic hasn't kind of produced the most impressive of performances most recently. Do you read anything into those? Um, you have to read. As a coach, you research his his, uh, his style from the beginning of his career, even from the amateur days. I look at the, the videos from his amateur fights up to date and you look at uh, uh, habits, good habits, bad habits. So... Um, yeah, he's a, he's a solid fighter, and uh, but like I said, I believe with the experience I have, to be able to devise a, a game plan, to be able to execute uh, uh, the game plan, the fighter, Daniel Dubois, um, to a high percentage, and we'll, we'll be victorious. Where would you rate Filip Hergovic in comparison to Daniel's past opponents? Obviously, you've got the fight with Joe Joyce and the Alexander Usyk defeats, but would you say Hergovic would be slotted in between those? Well, um, better than Jerome Miller? Where, where would you Well, he's right, up, he's right up there. His ranking suggests so. He's an unbeaten fighter. An unbeaten fighter He's a very dangerous fighter. Doesn't know how to lose because he's never lost. So he's a very, 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 very um, credible, highly ranked opponent. There was a lot of talk heading into this week, Don, that there might have been a possibility that IBF title might have been on the line. It's not the case, certainly currently. We know Alexander Usyk's written to the IBF now and requested an exception um, from the Hergovic mandatory. Is it a disappointment amongst the camp for that maybe no, it hasn't no. been stripped? No, with or without a belt, the man doesn't change, the oppos opposition doesn't change. It's still Hergovic. That is our belt, o o whether there's a, a belt thrown in or not. There's still a man in front of you you have to get rid of, so nothing changes for us. I know that Daniel would probably love a second crack at Alexander Usyk. Obviously, victory on Saturday would get him that one step closer, rate right? him even higher with the IBF. Is it on his mind? What's on the fighter's mind is mirrors what's on our mind, the team, because we do speak. You have to speak within your setup. It's about Saturday. It's about the 1st of June. It's about Mr. Ale uh, Mr. Hergovic, Philip Hergovic. Daniel's successful on Saturday night, Don. What does that say about his development, certainly from, say, Joe Joyce onwards? Well, this is our third fight together. Um, as you know, within 12 months, you know, it's, it's been uh, literally next month, June, coincidentally, would be exactly one year since we started working together. And what a way would it be to celebrate <laughs> our year's one-year anniversary by... Uh, being victorious against which I believe uh, really you always have to believe and we believe the last time we were out against Miller that we were going to be victorious we got it we also believe uh, you build everything on all aspects we build it's layers keep putting layers on top of we're going to put another couple of layers on top of the performance he put a against Milan to be able to get be victorious against Mr. Hergovic. You mentioned it will be your third fight together um, within a year's time. Sorry, well, a year on Saturday. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, how key is activity? Because people talk about with Joseph Parker, the activity he had, and then he goes and produces two fantastic performances Absolutely. against Wilder Zhang, Anthony Joshua's activity mm -hmm. to produce the performance against Otto Valin, and then Francis Ngannou, Daniel Dubois, you mentioned three fights together now. How key and important is the oh, activity most, element? Most definitely. It's the most important athlete. You know, that consistency, getting that run, being consistent, 
and it's key. And w he has been very active, Dan Odeboer, f going from camp to camp. Don, of course, um, I know you'd have been fully focused on Saturday night, but there was that big fight two weeks ago um, in Saudi Arabia between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. What did you make of that fight? What, what, the, what is there to make about it? It was a great, great uh, representation for boxing because um, we've, we've waited 25 years to to be able to get the undisputed um, championships back on. And yeah, it was a great spectacle. Um, uh, Usyk got it. Congratulations to him. Um, I backed Fury to, 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 to do it. Um, they've got a rematch, I believe, so, you know, let's do it again like they used to do in the past. Did you think Usyk was the deserved winner? Well, most definitely. The person who's the last man standing, you know, the the person who, who won, won the right, you know, he won on the night, yeah. I mean, it was a good fight. It was a close fight. Fury was doing exceptionally well. At some point, it, it looked a bit too easy for him at some point. Maybe he switched off and it, it took one punch in the heavyweight division, which changed it, changed the, the whole the whole fight. What was going through your mind in that ninth round when Tyson was visibly hurt, the 10-8 um, count mm -hmm. was given for the ropes keeping him up? At that moment, what went through your mind? And was you on board or off board with some people suggesting the ref could have jumped in and stopped it in that Yeah, it, again, it's... Um, it's one of those things who's refereeing it, uh, where the rules, you've got to look at the rules and question the rules. Um, some referees would have waved it off and nobody would complain, including Fury. Yeah, so the referee opted not to, not to stop the fight and give him a standing count. And unusual, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah. Was it a surprise to you to see Alexander Usyk kind of go through the levels and produce that type of performance given your experience when you was with Daniel in yeah. the corner? I'm not a hypocrite. I said from day one that he would not be successful as a heavyweight and how wrong could I have been? And I'm sure a lot of people, you know, when I'm wrong, I put my hands up. I'm wrong. Congratulations, Mr. Usyk. I didn't think he could do it, but he did it all the way through being an undisputed uh, cruiserweight, then become an un undisputed heavy, heavy, heavyweight unthinkable but it happened and that's his destiny you know i'm a strong believer in destiny it just shows you i didn't believe he could do it the same way a lot of people don't believe that uh that uh, my fighter daniel will be uh, uh baby milan he did they didn't believe he could he can be uh Hergovic. and we you have that belief and if it's already written in your destiny no one can stop it when you look at that victory you mentioned kind of his destiny and how he's proven so many people wrong undisputed in two whites now mm -hmm. Where does he right now amongst the world's ever, the world's finest of all time? Well, he got a rank in the top 10. You've got to drop him in there, of course. You've got to drop him in there. And to do that, it's not an easy thing to do. And he did it. And he's not the, in the current crop of the heavyweights today. He's not the biggest, is he? In terms of the strategy, the, the build. He's, to do that, it's remarkable. Don, I know you've always been a huge advocate of Anthony Joshua. You often worked with him briefly in his earlier days. <laughs> How does this version of Anthony Joshua fare against this version of Tyson Fury? Again, it's all down to the destiny. If he's destined, if he's destined, he's got the tools to be anyone. So if he's destined to do it, then it will happen. One final thought, I just want to get your thoughts on, Don. Um, June 15th, Chris Billam Smith and Richard Riakpour. Ooh, that's a mouth-watering one. Hard to call. I don't usually sit on the fence. Whoever turns up on the day, it's, it's about, on, in, in these championship fights, it's about on the day, whoever turns up on the day and executes the game plan, their coach and the team have devised as close to possible as the game plan will win. Don, I appreciate your time as always. Obviously, good luck on Saturday night. Thank, thank you for speaking much, to me in Boxing News. Stay blessed and God bless you. Perfect. Thank you, Don.